Hi, I'm Dennis Sweet for Eagle Communications. We're presenting Why Like Ike, another wonderful story about a wonderful guy, Dwight David Eisenhower. We're here at the Presidential Library. We're actually in the museum today in the back room. Back rooms are very interesting here. We have Pam Sanfilippo in the middle, Tim Reeves over there, and they're my content experts. They tell me what we're talking about and then do the talking, so I like that. Pam, good morning. Good morning. And what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about Eisenhower and the National Park Service. National Park Service. See, this will be a new topic for me and Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. So you have me at a complete disadvantage today. <laughs> So what's, well, what's, where do we start with Eisenhower and the National Park Service? Well, this year is the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the National Park Service. And while Eisenhower was president, he was instrumental in starting um, some work being done in the parks for what was called Mission 66, which was the 50th anniversary of the okay. Park Service. But they started planning 10 years before while Eisenhower was president. So. Okay. That's one of the, the connections uh, making it current for today. And then there were numerous parks uh, established under his presidency. You know, uh, the national parks in general in America, uh, they're synonymous. You know, uh, we were uh, open land. Look at how we started from the East mm -hmm. Coast and worked our way to the West and the various milestones along the way. But America is a, is a land of still great vastness. We live in Kansas. I'm always amused when I hear uh, somebody who pretends to be much wiser than us say, uh, talk about overpopulation. You could put the population of the world in Kansas <laughs> and, th and still have room left over for the rest of the world. But it's a, it's a country of vastness and beautiful resources. And there are five national parks in Kansas. Um, the uh, Several historic sites, uh, Fort Larned, Fort Scott, mm -hmm. Nicodemus, uh, Tallgrass Prairie Preserve, right. and then uh, another one directly related to Eisenhower Brown versus Board of Education. Right. That was a, a, mm -hmm. a, a very important um, judicial happening, mm -hmm. uh, civil rights happening. Uh, that all happened during the Eisenhower administration and, and still today kids in school are studying about that every day right. somewhere in a civics class. And you can really see then how the history unfolds with Fort Scott being on the old military road at the western frontier of right. America, mm -hmm. United States at that time. And then the Nicodemus um, African American colony um, post Civil War and then of course Fort Larned on the Santa Fe Trail so you're seeing that westward expansion mm -hmm. and and of course the mid-1950s with civil rights, so mm -hmm. all those important landmarks along the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have uh, content in the museum, in the archives, uh, a library about Eisenhower specifically and how he felt about national parks, or are we just re relying on what was done? Um, there is various um, information. First of all, this, the, his support for Mission 66, um, he wrote several letters to um, Congress to support it. It was a, a huge undertaking for the parks to build infrastructure. Pull out a little bit of my notes okay. on it. Um, it was a, a 10 year program um, to upgrade facilities, staffing, and resource management uh, throughout the system by the 50th anniversary. They anticipated that visitation would increase to 80 million by 1966 on that 50th anniversary, and they uh, up to that point, they had about 50 million visitors a year, so they wanted to uh, prepare for that with uh, visitor service facilities, things like that. From what I can see over your shoulder, there's a very amusing number there. It says 1955 <laughs> budget was $43,494,000, million, $43 million, right? Right. We didn't get an email, uh, we didn't get a website built for that <laughs> in the last federal program to roll out. Mm -hmm. I think there were 62, then 122 million, and they're still working on a website. Um, maybe part of that's inflation, but we're sitting at the home of Dwight David Eisenhower, one of the greatest organizers mm -hmm. the world has ever seen. That's mm -hmm. what that was part of his genius, wasn't it, Tim? Oh, it really was, and I think one thing important with Mission 66, that modernization and that increased attendance. Mm -hmm. And some of those big parks now, you have to have a reservation two or three years in advance to visit or, or camp there. And so that, again, that sort of foresight was needed to anticipate mm -hmm. the demand, uh, which of course continues to grow. 
And again, that's the kind of thing that Ike was so good at, was that sort of planning. As he always said, plans are nothing, planning's everything. So yeah. that even yeah. appeals. You know, I think one other interesting connection is Teddy Roosevelt was Ike's, one of his two favorite presidents. The other was Abraham Lincoln. Okay, didn't know and that. One thing he really admired about Lincoln was the Homestead Act, which mm -hmm. of course distributed mm -hmm. land uh, to individual farmers instead of it just being taken largely by you know, large companies. And, and then conservation. He admired Roosevelt's, Theodore Roosevelt's conservation. Uh, was very concerned with conservation of natural resources, so forest and just um, you know, the sort of vast lands as mm -hmm. you described mm -hmm. out west. So it was a very, very large concern in terms of uh, his public policy. Mm -hmm. When we film these programs, I'm always surprised by something, and I think I was first surprised when I walked in here today and you told me we were doing this, because I always think of Theodore Roosevelt when you think of parks and you mm -hmm. think of the conservation era, uh, and it didn't, had never given a thought to Eisenhower. Uh, yet Pam came <laughs> today prepared to tell us what Eisenhower did in this area, and it, it's, a, it's a pleasant surprise for me, Pam. Well, he certainly, his um, home in Gettysburg is actually a unit right. of the National Park Service right. today. Um, he donated that to the federal government for the National Parks a um, couple of years, 1967, I believe, before okay. he passed away, uh, two years later. So, um, but Mamie was allowed to stay in the home and, and it wasn't opened to the public until after she passed in 1980. Uh, it opened to the public. So. And we're going to do some other things today, and I'm looking around the room, and they won't get to see them until we turn <laughs> the camera at them. But, you know, we sit here and we talk about topics about Eisenhower. And just in this room, we're in the middle of his administration and his history, what's surrounding us on the placards. And I think of um, the fact that we can get to these national parks as citizens and have access to them. Um, it's, it's a huge undertaking that, that we have benefit to and the systems that connect them, the highways and the byways and all the things that make our parks available to us as citizens is awfully cool. A lot of it points to Dwight David Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And there are, in addition to Eisenhower's home, about 40 sites associated with, with presidents. And so there's at least one for each president. I'm sure there'll be more in the, in the future as those sites are commemorated. But Eisenhower established um, I'm not sure the exact number, Pam, but it's a fairly long list. Yes, um, I didn't count them. Number of uh, battle sites, um, Civil War battle sites, including some where my family was involved, so I've been able to oh, really? experience those. Yeah, particularly, it was the Battle of Pea Ridge. Pea Ridge, yeah, and, sure. uh, Or as my family's side called it, Elkhorn Tavern. <laughs> and, and it's considered the best, I guess, preserved yeah. large mm -hmm. battlefield. That's not very far yeah. from us. People watching really here could drive oh. down and see that. Wilson's Creek battlefields, another Civil mm -hmm. War that I had a, a connection to. Um, but it's, it's a wide variety that he established, not just battlefields, uh, but also, of course, wilderness areas and uh, Franklin Roosevelt Memorial, Bent's Old Fort in Colorado, mm -hmm. which was an important site mm -hmm. in, in Westward Expansion. And of course, Eisenhower loved history, and so I'm sure it gave him great pleasure to be able to preserve those sites uh, for his fellow citizens to enjoy years mm -hmm. down the road. Mm. We often, um, before the cameras come on, we have a conversation about young people when we're here. You know, you work with young people all the time, mm -hmm. and, and the education programs here at this facility are part of the vitality and the sustainability of the legacy of Eisenhower. Um, to me, this is another topic about young people. You know, they don't, this work is never done for the people of the current generation. When you're preserving a national park, it's for the next generation and the generation after that. Um, preserving actual our country and our history and the access to it, much like where we're sitting in a museum. That's a natural museum there. Exactly. Yeah, they call it a classroom without walls for, mm -hmm. for the entire National Park Service. So. What else have you got for us? Well, um, there's also a connection to the uniform that uh, park rangers wear. Um, this is a um, short World jacket. War II short jacket mm -hmm. called an Ike yep. jacket. And the Park Service, one of the uniform uh, options that they have to wear is an ice yeah, jacket. Yeah. Uh, the entire Park Service uniform is based on the Army for years before the Park Service um, 
uh, was established, there were national parks, um, and the Army was mostly responsible for maintaining those mm -hmm. and uh, taking care of facilities and, and uh, welcoming visitors. Many of the original superintendents were Army officers. So um, there's that, that connection with Ike, and the, the Ike jacket was one of those. So this is just a World War II uh, jacket, similar to what the Park Service would wear. My family history uh, of uncles and grandfathers and stuff, you know, you, 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 when you're little you hear all those stories and uh, you, sometimes you don't put the linkage together until you grow up and have the opportunity to be exposed to people like you. But, you know, as you look back through the CC camps, uh, the Conservation Corps went around and built a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. <clears throat> and those were, uh, uh, were was a godsend for the, from the Depression, you know, yes. those opportunities to work. But it was also building infrastructure in our country. And, and where I grew up, which is southwest Colorado, many of those projects were all connected with parks mm -hmm. and connected Correct. with national uh, forest and things mm -hmm. to, to improve the, the, the quality of the public land and, mm -hmm. the, and the infrastructure in that. And um, that's, a, that's an interesting thought that I hadn't had until you just said that. <laughs> well, and Eisenhower actually worked some at the CCC when he was at the War Department in the early 30s. Oh, really? In fact, we have mm -hmm. pictures of him inspecting CCC camps. Oh, no kidding. And was offered a job with the Works Progress Administration, which mm -hmm. administered those camps, but mm -hmm. went on right. to an assignment with General MacArthur in the Philippines. Yeah. You know, I you think of the huge fire going up in Canada, and we had our own little fire this winter, and thank you. Um, she could tell I was going to reach for something, couldn't <laughs> she? So as we, as I think about that, you know, I, I watched uh, the firefighting crew grow out of that Conservation Corps and the National Parks, and that's where the ability to fight these fires and the organization that mm -hmm. fight these fires came from. And little did we know um, that um, we would be managing vast reaches of forest for the benefit of the world in, here in America. And it really is, you know, we ship timber finished products and raw timber all over the world and a lot of that is managed from the overgrowth of our national parks. And that's what Eisenhower in terms of conservation was for was that wise use that Theodore mm -hmm. Roosevelt was also that there is a compromise uh, mm -hmm. of use mm -hmm. as well as uh, conservation mm -hmm. and to find that balance and of course balance was always key with Ike. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my things I love. Mm -hmm. uh, had this thought this morning about a different portion of my life, but balance is everything and everything. Uh, and Eisenhower as a leader, these are small. <laughs> Sam, I need a bigger pair. If it doesn't <laughs> fit. Uh, if it doesn't fit, you can't. Uh -huh. You know, one thing I'll, on I'll mention uh, before it leaves my mind, uh, we mentioned the, the other presidential National Park Service sites. We are the only uh, National Archives Presidential Library um, to operate a boyhood home. There are other presidential libraries that are near boyhood homes, but they're run by the National Park Service or somebody mm -hmm. else. And also, it's hard to tell because there's been so many improvements to the grounds over the years that we are a historic site. And in the future, we would like to develop that more and have uh -huh. more interpretation about you know, Eisenhower's neighborhood mm -hmm. and the fact that this was once used, uh, land was used to pasture the cattle who came up the Chisholm Trail. Yeah. Uh, another interesting aspect of that, when they were building the visitor center in 1975, and they were excavating the parking lot behind Ike's home, they struck some kind of object with a grater, and it turned out to be the foundations of a blacksmith shop no from, kidding. from the, those sure. Cowtown days. And Ike was probably never aware um, that that was in his backyard, which would have tickled him being such a fan sure. of, of the Old West. And then the neighbor across the street, George Dudley, had been a deputy marshal to Hickok. And so there's so much I think we could do mm. to tell the story of this site because again, like other presidential libraries, we are on a historic site. Um, now that I've got my mind focused on these small gloves, it's hard to get back to the point. I think these are Trump gloves, by the way. Uh, Sam gave them to me, I don't know. But anyway, so here we go, um, balance. Um, we were talking off camera about Eisenhower could put up with some things and other people couldn't, and I suggested George Patton would have been a good aide de camp for the Khrushchev meeting, right? <laughs> um, Eisenhower had the ability to balance uh, intellectual thought and emotional control and yes, geopolitical pictures uh, of a different size and shape than most of his uh, peers at the time could. He could see the world through 
through a lens that covered 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Really remarkable. You know, I, I grew up uh, enjoying the national parks around us, and I grew up also uh, under the burden of the national parks around us from some of the lack of balance of use. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as I look forward as we preserve, whether it's here on this facility or whether it's uh, the, the uh, national parks around southwest Colorado and the other places where other people uh, enjoy, it will be balance that saves those things. Mm -hmm. It will be the ability to see all of the benefits to all of the people and not just a narrow view. And that's exactly what the, the Park Service was established to do in many cases. Um, the first national park was Yellowstone, uh, established by a former uh, general who became president, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, in 1872, to preserve that and protect it so that, um, you know, as we were hitting that uh, period of the um, of expansion the, after Civil expansion War. Expansion mm -hmm. and, and the uh, Gilded Age, as they mm -hmm. called it, where these wealthy uh, businessmen were, were gathering up property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wanted to make sure that this was preserved for all of America mm -hmm. to come, no matter um, yeah. your wealth or, or status. And uh, the difference between the national parks and the preservation and, and something like national forests is national forests are administered by the Department of Agriculture. They're considered yes. a resource mm -hmm. that can be mm -hmm. used in the Park Service lands. Most of it is protected from that for preservation for the Now the reason public. that Sam snuck in and gave me the gloves <laughs> is because somebody foolishly left a folder on my side of the table <laughs> over here. What's in there? That is the report for Mission 66. Oh, um, wow. Explaining how, what they were going to do at I each port, <laughs> at each park to improve the infrastructure. A lot of the visitor centers that are built that you see today at national parks were a result of Eisenhower's support for Mission 66. So I don't see Smokey the Bear on that. No. <laughs> Pam will tell you why. <laughs> Smokey the Bear is actually part of the um, National Forest Service, okay. uh, but the National Park Service uniform includes the hat that we yeah. call Smokey and the Bear. And that symbol, I mean the whole badge thing there, the mm -hmm. arrowhead mm -hmm. with the pine tree, uh, they kind of share that, much. don't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So. I just was really hoping there was going to be an Eisenhower and the Smokey the Bear connection that you were going to fill me in no. on today. <laughs> well, we do have Ike's uh, campaign hat from That's World right. War One era that looks just like a Very Park sad. Rangers hat. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. What exciting things don't we know? Well, um, we mentioned some of the parks that were established under Eisenhower's administration, and we mentioned a little bit about Brown versus Board of Education. Mm -hmm. The other significant one, I think, that Eisenhower probably never thought of at the time would become a national park is Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, mm -hmm. um, where... The, the placard yes, behind town. Yes, mm -hmm. where um, that today is still an operating high school, and yet it's also a unit of the National Park Service to commemorate the um, Little Rock Nine and also Eisenhower's actions uh, sending in the federal troops to protect those students. We, we've talked about this a couple times uh, in our Why Like Ike programs. Uh, you know, uh, when I go outside of these walls and talk to people, I think the general public is still a little bit, Eisenhower was involved in civil rights, how? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, that's the seminal event uh, of where uh, the federal government took action on behalf of um, the modernization of the view of civil rights in America, and it was done by that guy. That's right. He had to walk a really fine line. Um, in fact, they made pains really to say that it's not, we're not going there to enforce integration. We're going there to enforce a federal court order. Right, right. And so that yeah. way... The his, rule of law. That's right. So his southern yeah. opponents mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. not accuse him of mm -hmm. trying to force integration. Yeah. But yeah. So Again, a brilliant balance, if nothing else but in words. But, mm -hmm. you know, words that were balanced with what he did as a deed. He, he did have the authority to send the 101st Airborne there. Mm -hmm. And he, he had it because he had the right to enforce federal law. And he also understood the symbolism of the first division into mm -hmm. um, Normandy on D-Day. Right. 
And so yeah. there was obviously yeah. some some thought put into that as well. Well, I'm sure we're out of time. <laughs> uh, we held up the two fingers a little bit ago. Thanks for uh, introducing me to a whole new topic about Eisenhower today, Pam. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it, have enjoyed it. I'm, I'm probably gonna be bugging you on email to learn some more <laughs> because this is pretty, a new thing with Eisenhower is exciting for me. Great. So thank, thank you, Tim. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're Always going to turn to the camera off today on Why Like Ike. We know that you will appreciate this program because it gives you a chance to say, I need to go down to the Eisenhower Library Museum and Boyhood Home and ask somebody about where that blacksmith stone is out in the yard out there. That's right. So all of those things are available here to see and to people to talk to like Pam and Tim and increase our understanding of the great benefit of Abilene being the home of Dwight David Eisenhower. Thanks for watching. I'm Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. You have a great day.